same year as well. So no doubt they are very familiar with each other from the senior circuit and now in Masters, how maybe they've evolved, how their experience has grown is going to be, I think, showcased on the main stage for us here. But let's jump into our second semi-final to determine our final finalist. It's going to be Oliver jumping out with the Kyogre and the Incineroar, whereas Victor has opted to bring us the leads, Tornadus and Zacian. Yeah, it's an interesting lead here from Victor, not opting for any sort of weather here. He does have access to, obviously, the Torkoal and the Kyogre, but opting for the Tornadus. It's going to get the advantage of the, the rain being up here because it's going to have that 100% accurate hurricane. But it has to worry about the Incineroar here. If it, does, it doesn't decide to Dynamax, then it is going to be susceptible to a fake out that Oliver has access to here. And then the Zashin, although can do some decent damage it has been intimidated and it's not really putting that much pressure onto something like the Kyogre this turn although you can get some respectable damage off with something like a behemoth blade it's not really doing the damage that you want to kind of impact something on Oliver's side of the field. Tornado's going for the protect in the face of the fake out and you know very wise play here from Victor just double protecting to burn out that fake out from the incineral it was going down into the Tornadus but of course to no avail as Kyogre goes for the water spout just trying to capitalize on the rain being in the sky and deal some big damage but Victor going for that double protect now Victor knows that that is the strategy Oliver obviously has the capability to do and that incineral being really frustrating having brought that Zashin down to neutral yeah and it that's what you mean. You, you know, you want to really try and switch that Zashin out, but at the same time, you don't want to switch anything in really to take a full power water spout. So you do have the Tornadus here, where it doesn't have to worry about the fake out this turn. It can launch a Hurricane into that slot, get some decent damage off onto it, and just weaken that water spout, and maybe try and position something like your Venus, or if you've got it in the back onto the field, it's not going to get knocked out from that big, powerful attack from the Kyogre. And of course, Venusaur and Rain as well isn't going to have to worry about any fire top attacks coming out from that Incineroar. But instead, it looks like with the with the dive ball, I'm assuming this is going to be the Kyogre going for the Dynamax up on Oliver's side. So instead of going for those water spouts that could be reduced by something like a Max S Doom or a Hurricane from the Tornadus, if you're going for those Max Geysers, they're going to be still able to hit really, really powerfully. Victor is going to be going straight for the Behemoth Blade with the Zashin, going to be able to find its mark down onto the opposing Kyogre, obviously going to be dealing a a little bit more damage because it's in a Dynamax form, but Kyogre being able to resist it and at neutral, the Zashin just isn't being as impressive as it should be. Tornado's having the life orb recall on there as well, not being able to pick up a KO by any means on that Kyogre. So it's able to go for this powerful Max Geyser in the rain and just wipes the Zashin cleanly off the field. Yeah, that's a, that's a big turn there for Oliver. Nice Dynamax there with the Kyogre, taking advantage of the ability to do that and getting the most out of that turn as well and getting rid of a big threat on Victor's side of the field, and that's Ashin. Uh, the big Incineroar now getting that parting shot off onto the Tornadus, which is going to weaken those Hurricanes, the, the subsequent turns as well, which is also going to be really helpful to Oliver for that Kyogre just to have that longevity to stick around on the field and get more of these Max Geysers off. Exactly, and it gives Oliver the opportunity to bring that Zashin in from the back as well and apply a little bit more pressure going forward. Intrepid Sword boosting up, going to put it at plus one attack. And I like the way Oliver's actually protecting that Incineroar, maybe thinking I need that possibly a little bit later on, having that fake up pressure just to allow me to still have opportunity to switch around the ball position if and when I need to. Yeah, and Victor's actually, you know, you think, oh, he's lost the Zashin here. It's not an ideal situation, but he can bring in if he's brought his own Kyogre, where we've seen the Venusaur here, but he does have access to that Prankster Tailwind here to give him the speed advantage they might need in this sort of situation. Well, Venusaur has now jumped onto the field in the rain, though it's still going to be sitting in a little bit of a difficult situation. Should be able to take a Max Geyser, however, but I wonder what the last Pokemon is for um, Victor in this situation. We haven't, you know, had it revealed as of yet. It could indeed be that Kyogre, but if it was something like, for example, the Torkoal, bringing that weather change in means that Venusaur is going to have its speed doubled by its chlorophyll ability, and then it's in a position to go for, it could go for Sleep Powders, or it could even Gigantamax. Yeah, or if it's got access to something like Weather Ball, it could attack into that Zashin mm -hmm. if the Sun is an option here for Victor, but it is going to pressure the Kyogre, whatever, because if it does go for the Dynamax here, it has got the ability to go for that big G-Max Vine Lash into the Kyogre, which will probably knock it out from this range and start that residual chip damage that we see as a side effect from that signature attack. 
Well, it is going to be the Gigantamax Venusaur here out on the battlefield in the rain. And of course, even in the rain, it can apply so much pressure to something like the Kyogre with a G-Max Vine Lash and get the residual damage going, particularly when it's Buddy Tornadoes is like, hey, you don't have the sun, but I can still boost your speed with a Tailwind, allowing the Venusaur to still go first with that G-Max Vine Lash, finding its mark on the Kyogre, removing it from play and setting up that residual damage. Obviously, it's going to sit a little bit vulnerable to this opposing Zashin, but I think removing Oliver's very powerful Pokemon here, getting the residual damage up, it's going to play into Victor's favor towards the end game. Yeah, and particularly if you do have that Torkoal in the back, you don't really worry too much about the Zashin either because mm. you've got a way, once you've taken that Kyogre down, to dictate the weather, bring in the Torkoal, and then deal with the Zashin quite handily with the, the, the Torkoal. But that is a huge turn there from the Behemoth Blade taking down the Venusaur and Victor losing that. We're going to see very limited max moves in this game one as both the Dynamax Pokemon have left the field and both our players now have the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back and start trying to get more take KOs and there is the little Torkoal coming in for Victor as Rillaboom comes in. Oh, Torkoal must be happy at this point in time. Rillaboom and Zashin, two Pokemon that Torkoal has a very nice time against. The only issue is going to be the speed. I know Tailwind is up in play, but Torkoal still is a very slow Pokemon. Very slow. There's no way that this <laughs> little turtle is outspeeding these two Pokemon on Oliver's side of the field. And you've got to wonder, does the, the, the Rillaboom does have the fake out, so it can slow it down for this turn while maybe the, the Zashian tries to get some damage off onto it, because I think that's a big key here. Try and get damage onto it, but you can't ignore the Tornadus as well. Does have access potentially to something like Heat Wave that can damage both of these Pokemon in the sun for big damage. Very true. And again, a wise double protect from Victor as Rillaboom's joined the field, has that fake out to utilize, but instead going to go straight into the protect of the Torkoal, which is definitely the threatening Pokemon on that side of the field. The Behemoth Blade was going into the protect there, and the residual damage just going to chip away at the Zashin. and obviously Rillaboom unaffected being a grass type. Yeah, and it'll, the, the residual damage here on the Zashin is quite important because if, if, if uh, Victor does have something like a Heat Wave here, then that damage might be quite important to put it in range for something like the Heat Wave True. in the sun to, to take the knockout on the Zashin. But it depends on the item that the, the Tornadus has got as well. Rillaboom switching out, bringing the Incineroar in. The Intimidate's really not going to be too beneficial here, but I think the critical thing is Oliver just applying that fake up pressure constantly. You know, Incineroar's one of the Pokemon that isn't going to worry, obviously, about taking any fire-type moves in this situation and can apply that pressure again with the fake out going forward. Zashin is wisely going to protect in the face of the Torkoal, leaving Torkoal free to go for um, something. After the Tornado has gone for the Heat Wave, it is revealed there. Going to be able to connect down onto the opposing Incineroar, but really doing minimal damage here, even though the sun is in the sky. As Torkoal goes for the Burning Jealousy, doesn't find its mark though into that Protect. Is going to be, of course, able to deal a little bit to the opposing Incineroar, but really only a little bit. Yeah, not too much as these residual attacks are kind of coming out. And yeah, you know, they're chipping away at the Zashin and the residual damage onto the Incineroar. It's going to be hard for Oliver to actually deal with this Torkoal because you think, yes, he's got the double faker, but at mm -hmm. some point, if you want, you're going to have to reposition that Incineroar. How do you reposition the Incineroar with a parting shot? Because if you do that, you bring your Rillaboom in on a potential attack from that Torkoal. Because it is going to be the slowest thing regardless. Or do you make a hard switch? Um, you know, it's very difficult at this point. And because it's so defensively well built, it's going to be hard for that Zashin to break it down without taking a big attack at the same time. Yeah, it's difficult, and unfortunately Torkoal will fall victim to the fake out there as Zashin goes for the Behemoth Blade. I mean, one thing I really like about this constant switching by Oliver is it's stalling out the sun turns. So as soon as that sun goes away, Torkoal becomes less of an offensive threat, so it's not going to get the boost to his fire-type moves that are, you know, being powered up by the sun while the residual damage is just chipping away. But, you know, that's not going to be there for forever. The grass train's not going to be there for too much longer either. But I think that if you're Oliver, you've stalled out the Tailwind, you now just need to stall out the sun, and that's where your Pokemon maybe have more of a chance to deal some damage. Yeah, there is an opening here for the Zashian to potentially take down the Tornado here because with that Tailwind ending it now is going to outspeed it. So you can potentially get a Behemoth Blade onto the Tornado, take it down and then just have the three versus one, which makes it a lot easier to kind of manage. And if you've got something like high horsepower on the Rillaboom, you kind of just need to whittle that Torkoal down to the point where you can get your Rillaboom onto the field, fake out, high horsepower and then kind of close the match up that way. And that's true as well. High horsepower would be a great answer to that tool call, but you might want to get a little bit of you know HP dwindled off it there. Oh, not going to be able to get the double protect on there. The Zashin on Oliver's side going to be able to protect as Incineroar uses the Sun while it's still there to go for a powerful Flare Blitz into the opposing Tornadoes and remove it from play with a critical hit just for good measure. And that now leaves that little tool call, like you said, Lee, against three 
three Pokemon. Burning Jealousy going to come out, obviously just going to do it, that minimal amount of damage onto the imposing Incineroar. But Oliver, I think, really does have the utility here to chip away. It doesn't matter at this point if the Incineroar and the Zashin get KO'd. As long as they can deal enough damage to this Torkoal, Rillaboom can clean up. Yeah, and you've also got the the ability to parting shot as well with the Incineroar. I know I mentioned that you probably don't want to parting shot to bring your Rillaboom in on the field. <laughs> but if the sun's not in effect, then it's it's less of a risk because you mm -hmm. can reduce that special attack stat and then get the Rillaboom in. Without the sun on the field, it makes it a little less risky. Sacred Sword connecting down onto Torkoal does almost 50%, as Incineroar does indeed go for that parting shot. And I know you said it was that little bit risky, but... Looks like Oliver wants it to... He thinks it's worth the risk in this situation, reducing that special attack as well. It is the last turn of Sun, so Sun is in the sky for this moment. Going into the next turn, it won't be. So if Rillaboom's able to survive out, then it's going to be able to deal some good damage with something like a high horsepower. And if it's holding something like the Assault Vest, um, then, you know, it, it, it's going to be in a slightly better position. Yeah, and... With the Sun Gun now, you've not got really the risk that you had before, and you know that the Incineroar is a, a great switch in. You've got the opportunity to just go for a fake out here, and you can see how much the Sacred Sword did to the Torkoal anyway, so you only need a couple of those to hit, really, from this point on, especially with the grassy terrain leaving the field now, and I think that lack of recovery for the Torkoal is making it even more difficult for Victor to kind of eke out the kind of last few turns in this, and it looks like Oliver is going to be able to lock this one up. Yeah, Oliver taking game one here and is only one game away from getting into the grand finals. Victor, it's going to have to be a case of adjusting going into that game two to try and push for a game three in order to have a stake at trying to get that champion title. But I mean, there was so much in that game one. I think for me, the critical thing was the fact that the Kyogre on Oliver's side was able to remove the Zashin from play, just limiting the restricted options that Victor then had. And unfortunately, yes, you know, Victor was able to do the KO against the, uh, the Kyogre, but at the cost of his Venusaur. And I'm not sure if that trade-off was beneficial in the long run. No, I, I think you're spot on with that, that analysis there. I think losing the Zashin so early on, mm -hmm. your Victor, is not really what you want because the, the Kyogre was kind of free just to pick it up there and was left way unpunished. So I think that's something that maybe Victor has to keep in mind when going into uh, this next match because I think you don't want to lose it so freely. I think you've got to kind of be a bit better prepared for the Kyogre maxing, especially in not kind of given... If you don't have a switch in for it, at least kind of lead into the matchup where you can pressure it. Maybe, yes. you know, something like Venusaur to lead in and have the talk well in the back so you can still kind of put that pressure on from the start rather than have to worry about switching in on a Kyogre. No, I completely agree. And if you're Victor now, you have to really try and keep your composure. You know, this is a really intense part of the competition and you need to be able to win your next game to keep pushing forward to try and stay in the competition. And those adjustments are going to be interesting because as we saw, Oliver was very dominant with that Kyogre. And it is a Kyogre versus Kyogre battle here, but there certainly was really just the one Kyogre that shone in that game one. Yeah, and you expect, you know, you, you, you're thinking, oh, it's really going to be tough for Oliver to kind of take this game. There's a Venusaur there. He hasn't got a way to really kind of dictate the weather as well as what Victor has, but he played that phenomenally well. Um, took his chances when he had them. Obviously, that big Max Geyser into the Zashin was a big turning point. And from there, he kind of just played it out and did what he needed to do to close that out and make it very difficult for Victor to really get his game plan going. And um, I think if he does that again in this next game, he probably will be the, mm -hmm. going into Championship Sunday, but Victor's got a lot to do in this one. But he does have the tools to be able to kind of overcome the, the problems that he's facing on Oliver's team. Very true, and Oliver certainly demonstrated a, a good knowledge and good control of the ball positioning there. There's plenty of switchability on Oliver's team. When you look at Pokemon like the Incineroar, looking at Pokemon like the Rillaboom, having the opportunity to utilize that fake out not only allows you to stall turns, but could possibly buy you the opportunity to go for something like a hard switch, or particularly with those passing shots, not only being able to reduce the attack or special attack and just weakening your opponent's offensive presence, but being able to switch and give yourself a better ball position for the next turn or towards that kind of win condition that you need. That does allow Oliver all of that flexibility. And again, you know, if Oliver wanted to make some adjustments in here, one thing that Victor was kind of pushing for was that speed control, trying to get up the tailwind. And then obviously having the Torkoal in the back did 
potentially give Venusaur a second option for being able to get nice and speedy. So possibly Oliver maybe wants to find a way to have speed control on his side of the field as well, just to be prepared for it. Yeah, well, he's got a couple of options here. He has got the Tornado Speed on that he could bring to the to the match uh, and kind of match the Tailwinds if he wants to. Um, and he also has the, the option with the Landorus as well. You know, depending on the item on the Landorus, it does have the option to go for that max um, airstream and give mm -hmm. the speed control support that way. It's a little bit risky though if Victor decides to go down the route of Tornado's Kyogre against something like Landorus. It's not the best <laughs> kind of thing to have out at that, that stay in time. So, you know, it, the, probably the Tornadus is the one if you were wanting to match the kind of speed control um, from Victor's side of the field is to bring you on Tornadus and try and match it that way. But I don't think Oliver really struggled too much in that respect. To be honest, he kind of managed the, the, the tailwind from Victor's side very well in that game and it really didn't kind of affect the outcome. But like you say, you know, the Torkoal is a Pokemon that didn't really benefit from that at all. It's kind of there to disrupt the rain on Oliver's side of the field and set up that Venusaur. And I think that's what Victor's going to have to try and do a little bit better in this next match uh, if he wants to kind of overcome what Oliver's trying to do on his side of the field. And again from Victor, it was lovely to see the heat wave on that tornado. It's really nice, particularly when you're facing down against Pokemon that do not want to take fire type attacks. But I did find the burning jealousy a little underwhelming in that match. It just wasn't able to do the damage output and obviously wasn't able to catch any potential burns um, at all, which would have been great from Victor's perspective just to weaken the attacking presence of Oliver's Pokemon, particularly that Zashin. If you're able to get a burn on the Zashin, it can really give Victor a strong advantage. Yeah, 100%. And that's the, that's the main aim of that move. You know, you want to burn mm -hmm. that Zashin and any other physical attackers like the Rillaboom as well to kind of protect your own Kyogre if possible if you are bringing it so <laughs> yeah I think taking advantage of that is going to be the big thing for him but you are right it was underwhelming especially after that parting shot it was just not doing the damage that uh, Victor needed it to do well, Pokemon trainers, I hope you are ready for this game two of our Masters Top 4 Division semi-final. Oh, oh weather wall <laughs> combinations. Here we go. Classic combinations tried and tested. Oliver bringing the Raincore of Tornadus and Kyogre, whereas Victor has opted for Torkoal and Venusaur. And Torkoal being a slow, sturdy little turtle means that it is slower. The sun is in the sky, Lee. Yeah, this is huge for Victor. Really good call here to predict maybe the, the, the Kyogre coming out. I'm going to lead with Torkoal here. And I'm <laughs> going to pressure this Kyogre from the start. Obviously, with the sun up as well, the Tornadus is hurricanes aren't as threatening. They're not as accurate. And the Venusaur in a great position to just go for that Gigantamax and get that G-Max Vine Lash into the Kyogre and start that residual chip damage from turn one. And I like the look of this turn one as well from Victor. Getting the talk all out of there, it's done what it needed to do, set the sun, and you don't want it to be sitting there primed to take something like a Max Geyser or any any type of damage at this point. You want to heat the sun in case you need it later on. And clicking the Gigantamax button straight away on this Venusaur, making a formidable threat. Something like a G-Max Vine Lash into that Kyogre is going to be devastating. But Oliver also wants to go for the Dynamax, and it's going to be that Kyogre again. And I think this is a really critical moment for Victor, being able to go for that damage into the Kyogre, trying to remove it from play and at the same time you've got the weather up on your side but what if it is able to be changed yeah this is the thing with the Kyogre going for the max here it's quite brave from Oliver he does want to get that tailwind up now and change the weather as soon as possible go for that max guys are probably into that torque slot but because the sun is still in effect <laughs> it's still fast they're going to be able to get that G max vine lash off before the Kyogre can attack and now the Kyogre can go for its uh, max geyser mm -hmm. it's not going to be hitting for very uh, effective damage obviously the sun reducing the damage here tornado is going to survive and now the rain is in effect but you do have the ability to switch that Torkoal in the next turn because Victor protecting it that turn one, taking it out, mm -hmm. knowing that the geyser could come out from the Kyogre. So he's got the ability to dictate the weather this next turn. Exactly, Lee. You called it perfectly there. The turns really can play themselves out. Tornadoes can switch out, bring that Torkoal back on. Because as we've just seen, despite the tailwind on Oliver's side of the field, when the sun's in the sky, Venusaur is still faster than that Kyogre. And particularly with the residual damage that the G-Max Vine Lash has just given that Kyogre, one more of those G-Max moves into the Kyogre and Sun will pick up the KO, but you also don't need the Sun when you have a Tailwind of your very own. You know already when that speed is doubled up that you are going to be faster, but Tornadus on the opposing side for Oliver is going to go for the Hurricane, revealing the Cobra Berry on the Venusaur. Ooh, that would have been so, so destructive oh. outside of the Gigantamax with that critical hit, but thankfully the extra HP allowing Venusaur to survive it comfortably with about 50% of its HP remaining and destroy the Kyogre on the opposing side of the battlefield. Yeah, that's a huge 
huge turn for Victor. The critical hit a little bit unfortunate there, taking a bit more damage than you would have expected to, but still, the return from this turn from Victor is huge. Able to get rid of the Kyogre before it's had a big impact like it did in that game one. Fair enough, Tornadus has taken a lot of damage, but it has been able to get the Tailwind up. And like you say, because of that speed tearing from that turn one, you know for a fact if you've got that two times speed with your Venusaur, you're already outspeeding the Kyogre. There's no need to risk the Torkoal coming in. Very Let's true. Save it for later on in this match when potentially the Zacian is going to be in the back for Oliver. That's really true. You want to keep that Torkoal nice and safe depending on how this end game might shape up. And I think it's interesting that these Tornadoses have been so key as their supporting role going for these Tailwinds. Torkoal is going to make a little bit of an appearance though. It's like, hey, I hear you calling my name. Let, let me come out onto the battlefield and bring the sun up, meaning that this Venusaur is incredibly speedy with the Tailwind also in effect. Using the sun as well, it can go for that Weather Ball, turning into a Max Flare into the Rillaboom. Not enough to be able to pick up the KO. Looks like the Assault Vest on that Rillaboom is the item choice. Torkoal is able to dodge out of the way there, but not of the high horsepower. It is going to fall victim to that, but isn't taking a double up. It will, however, take a little bit of a snack, though. You know, it, that was a little bit of a trying time for it with the high horsepower, and it needs a citrus berry just to regain a little bit of HP. Yeah, it's a really nice play there from, from Victor to not only reduce the accuracy of that hurricane by getting the sun back onto the field, but also being able to utilize that max flare into the Rillaboom and do some huge damage to it and really put a dent in it, making it difficult to get really much out of it for the, for the rest of the game. Yeah, I absolutely love that play. Really devastating from Venusaur. And I really like the way Victor is just calculating how this Venusaur is being played. Whatever partner Pokemon is next to that Venusaur has been instrumental to helping it succeed in this game too so far. Obviously, we're nowhere near the end of it at this point. We're kind of moving into the second phase of this game where the Dynamax turns are over for Victor, and Oliver is now in a position where he needs to be able to find a way to get back under the speed of this Venusaur, because Venusaur is just so fast and formidable. And particularly with the Sun in the Sky, you can go for that Weather Ball again and just remove that Rillaboom. Yeah, that, that is an option here where you can just d easily do that, and then you may maybe even fire a, a Burning Jealousy as well. We are going to see the Weather Ball fired into that Protect on the Tornadoes this turn, and a knockoff coming out from the Rillaboom into that Venusaur. Yes, and I actually really like this play here from Victor because targeting down into that tornado, so you might have needed the double up from the Burning Jealousy here as well. Burning Jealousy, as you see, completely just gets rid of that Rillaboom with the critical hit as well, and, but possibly needed the Burning Jealousy plus the Weather Ball into that tornado just to kind of remove it and get the double KO there. You can see the residual damage chipping away at it, taking it below that 50% HP. Um, but as well, you know, the knockoff coming out from the Rillaboom, something that we were excited to see yesterday, but as the Cobra Berry had already been consumed on the Venusaur, it's going to be at a weakened damage output for that knockoff. Yeah, and if the, the last Pokemon is the Zashin, yeah, it's going to have a, a tough time. Tornadoes can set up the Tailwind to, you know, put the Zashin ahead of the Venusaur so it's not threatened so much by that weather ball. Pick up the knockout there. But you're going to have to worry ne this next turn about that burning jealousy. Have you got enough to remove the Torkoal? Because that Intrepid Sword's just activated. You've taken that plus one boost. Burning Jealousy is now primed to get the burn if it connects with the Zash in here. So whether or not Oliver actually goes for an attack here or maybe kind of just goes for protect mm -hmm. and tries to attack potentially with the Tornadus to remove the Venusaur, it could be an option or set that speed control. But that's the thing, if you protect the Zash and then your Tornadus, you know, if you're a Victor, then you can just target down the Tornadus. Don't have to worry about the Zash and just remove it from play. Um, at the same time, like you said, if you don't protect the Zash and that Burning Jealousy is going to be able to, to burn against it. And Victor still has a whole team of Pokemon waiting in the back, including a Tornadus of his very own that he can bring in to set a Tailwind up later on. Tailwind on Oliver's side does get set up once again, but Venus is still incredibly speedy thanks to the sun in the sky too. And we'll go for that Weather Ball into the Tornadus and remove it from play, leaving Oliver with just the Zashin left in front of both these Pokemon capable of dealing out fire type moves. We also know that the Tornadus has access to Heat Wave in the back. It's not going to be a happy time for Zashin at all. It does get a KO against the Venusaur though with that Behemoth Blade, but Victor has so many great options in the back to, to try and combat this last remaining Pokemon of Oliver. Yeah, and now we see the Burning Jealousy connect. It's going to do a considerable amount of damage because it is a single target, um, and it should. Tailwind pittering out there. Yeah, Tailwind um, burning out there, but Victor has the opportunity to bring the Tornadus in from the back as well. And particularly as we have not yet seen the fourth remaining Pokemon there for the uh, for Victor, it's going to be interesting to see which one is going to come out and possibly clean up this game. Particularly if you want to get the speed up and there's something like the Kyogre, you could go for something like a powerful water spout. But we're just going to see it locked in as a forfeit. So we're going to have a game three. We are. We're going to 
have one more match between these two players and both playing phenomenally well here. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing this. At the end of the day, this is top four. One of these players is going to be joining Eric Rios in finals tomorrow. And it's going to come down to one game. They're one game apiece. They've made some phenomenal adjustments. And in that game, too, I mean, it really was that turn zero. We certainly jumped out of our seats. We could hear everyone in the hall so excited to see the double weather come out. And I think the fact that because our talker was so slow that Sun was able to be in the sky, Victor was just in such a dominant position straight from the get-go. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing, you know. That, like we, we did say going into that game that Victor would have to manage the, the Venusaur a lot better there um, because of the... Um, the the way that it kind of it wasn't as effective in that game one and, and Oliver was able to manage the game a lot better with his Kyogre there. Victor on, uh, this time around obviously made way better use of his Venusaur, got a big damage onto the field and removed the Kyogre before it really could do anything massively effective. Mm -hmm. And of course, as well, the little talk hole getting up to such mischief. I mean, it was so mischievous, we kind of overlooked the fact that the Burning Jealousy, if it comes into a Pokemon, if the Zashin had hard switched in and got the boost, then it would have been able to get the burn. But if it's just come in and the turn hasn't really started, then that burn isn't going to activate. And that was just something that, you know, didn't matter in the end, but just to kind of clarify for any of the viewers at home, it was something that I think we had a little overlook of there. Yes, big overlook of, because it, confusing that with the turn zero of the oh, yes. uh -huh. that happens, then Ben and Jesse has that effect. Obviously, when it comes in mid-game, then it doesn't apply the same as it does. But still, Burning Jealousy doing a significant amount of damage in that end game there, and it was going to be able to close it up. You saw about 50% damage in the sun there, and the Zashin would have found it very difficult to close out with the amount of Pokemon Victor had left at that last turn. Exactly, and here we go. Game three. The winner of this set will be advancing to Championship Sunday against Eric Rios. Which Kyogre is going to be in that Grand Finals? Is it going to be Victor or is it going to be Oliver? Game three will be the deciding factor. Let's get excited for this match. It's going to be the Incineroar and Kyogre leading out for Oliver. And on Victor's side of the field, Venusaur and Incineroar. So no Torquoise setting the sun, but who knows? Maybe it's hiding in the back. Yeah, it probably is for Victor. But a nice adjustment here from Oliver as well, just to, you know, give a little bit of an advantage for him with the Incineroar. If the Torkoal does come out, at least you've got a way to pressure the Venusaur because you're going to have the sun up. Um, and if the Torkoal's not out, then at least you're going to be able to kind of have a way to at least try and parting shot it or fake out to prevent it from moving this turn. Exactly, and Incineroar are able to, on either side, be able to apply a little bit of pressure with something like the fake out. But Venusaur on... Victor's side not going to be as happy in the rain in this situation. It wants to be able to get the sun up and apply a lot of pressure to that opposing Kyogre, particularly as Oliver's in a situation where Tornadus isn't in the field, isn't able to just go for something like a Tailwind. So Venusaur could get that immediate speed boost and deal some good damage to Kyogre. But on the flip side, if Oliver wants to Dynamax up that Kyogre, we know it can survive one of the G-Max Vine Lashes and it can go for a powerful Max Geyser into that Torkoal slot, change the weather up, and then things look a little bit more difficult for Victor going into the following turn. Yeah, definitely. But we're going to see Oliver just retreat the Kyogre this turn and opt to bring the Rillaboom onto the field, wants to preserve that Kyogre and not let it go down as easy as it did in that second <laughs> game. Exactly, Rillaboom jumping into the fray, bringing the grassy terrain onto the field and applying a fake out pressure into that next turn as well. But we're going to see a Nulla Gigantamax here and I'm sure to no surprise it's going to be that Venusaur because Victor wants to be able to apply that pressure and the residual damage as well has been so critical. Um, so Gigantamax Venusaur taking to the stage and it's it's nice in a way that the, the way in the sense that it doesn't have to worry about Kyogre also Dynamaxing, but at the end of the day, there's not too much in this situation that Venusaur can really do um, to the Rillaboom, but it has the potential to have gone something into the Incineroar. Instead, the G-Max Vine Lash into Rillaboom, not dealing too much damage, just getting up that residual. Yeah, and then it's a nice switch in to take that huge attack. It is going to be boosted by the Grassy Train, but Rillaboom taking that pretty comfortably. And the nice thing about Rillaboom coming onto the field as well is it's going to be immune to the residual damage being that Grass type. Yes. So you're only taking that damage on one side of the field being the Incineroar. Now, the Incineroar in a decent position. It has just been faked out on Oliver's side of the field, but it can try and go for a parting shot to maybe reposition and stall out these, these G-Max turns from the Venusaur. Well, Venusaur as well could potentially go for something like the Weather Ball into the Incineroar here and just deal a significant chunk of damage. Um, if I was the Incineroar on Victor's side, I'd probably want to get out of there just to be able to be utilized as a good support Pokemon going forward and allow Venusaur to have a partner Pokemon next to it that's going to be able to do something to help boost up the speed, whether it is the Torkoal or the Tornadus coming in to utilize being able to um, boost up 
um, some of the speed. But then, at the end of the day, you need a Zashin or a Kyogre, otherwise that means a Victor has left his restricted at home. So it's good to see the Zashin jump into the frame, getting that Intrepid Sword boost up as well, getting onto the field unintimidated will be beneficial going forward. Venusaur does indeed go for the Weather Ball, the Max Geyser. Speaking of it earlier, it is now happening, and Incineroar will be removed, so Oliver no longer has access to that pesky Pokemon jumping in <laughs> and going for the Intimidate. Play, so huge! Yes, with that Weather Ball, taking advantage of the weather here and taking down that Incineroar, which is massive here for mm -hmm. Victor and uh, taking a really big lead here, you know. The nice play there from Oliver with the high horsepower, getting some good respectable damage onto that Zashin on the switch in there, but this Venusaur is dictating the play at the moment. Yeah, it really is. And I love how flexible this Venusaur is being, you know, whether the sun's in the sky or the rain, it seems to have an answer for many, many different things. I do want to know what the last remaining Pokemon for Victor is, though, because depending on which which Pokemon is going to be beside that Venusaur, it gives Venusaur a couple of options. If it is something like that Torkoal, then having the sun in the sky, Venusaur can utilize Max Flare. Neither Zacian or the Rillaboom is going to want to take one of those. Not at this point, yeah, and it's a great opportunity to pull a Torkoal onto the field if you do have it in the back, and like you say, launch that mm -hmm. Max Flare into either one of these slots here, either the Rillaboom or the Zacian. Maybe the Zashian, because you know you've launched it into the Rillaboom already, and the Rillaboom able to take that, so it might be worth going after the Zashian, because Rillaboom doesn't really threaten the Venusaur too much. True, and Rillaboom as well, it, it, knowing it has that Assault Vest item due to the damage it, it was taking previously, you might want to give it a little bit more chip damage before you go for something like the Max Flare, because otherwise you're going to, I think, find yourself a little bit short of that KO, and of course Rillaboom's not being affected by the residual damage. Venusaur just going straight up for a Max Guard here, doesn't want to leave itself vulnerable to a Behemoth Blade, as Ashen goes for a Behemoth Blade on Victor's side going to be able to target down into that opposing Rillaboom and I really really like this play. Removes the Rillaboom from being threatening with that high horse power in any way against that opposing Zashin and allowing the Zashin on the opposing side to KO it in return gives Victor the opportunity to switch Pokemon in from the back. Whether it is going to be that Incineroar just to throw an Intimidate down on the Zashin or maybe the opportunity for this Torkoal we will have to see. Yeah it's a big play there from, from Victor because now it limits Oliver's ability to change the weather if the Torkoal is in the back for Victor. If he is able to get the sun up, the Kyogre is going to be locked on the field. Of course, it will be able to Dynamax, it will be able to go for those Max Geysers, but at what cost to be able to launch one of those off? You're going to have to take a GMAS Vine Lash with the grassy terrain mm -hmm. on the field right now, which is going to double up its power and make it very threatening. Oh, that's true. I mean, the Dynamax turns are over for the Venusaur, but that, like the couch with the grassy terrain there, Lee, just being able to boost it up. I, I have to really credit Victor with that Max Guard, though, because you knew that you would be able to pick up the KO against that Rillaboom with your Zashin, and you didn't want to leave your Venusaur then vulnerable for the Zashin on the opposing side to, to possibly go for a Behemoth Blade. So just protecting the Venusaur so that you can have this wonderful position of the Torkoal and Venusaur in the sunshine here. And like you said, Venusaur able to apply so much pressure right now, and Torkoal as well with the fire type moves into that opposing Zashin. The one one thing, however, is what we're seeing now. Oliver still has access to that Dynamax, and a Max Geyser could easily change the weather. Yeah, and if you do change the weather, then, you know, it does, it, it protects his ash in a little bit further with the rain up on the field. You're just going to be able to have to take an attack from the Venusaur here or risk your, your Zash in taking a, um, a weather ball, which, you know, if it takes it now, then it's not ideal. But the other problem <laughs> is this Sleep Powder, which has come straight out into that Kyogre. Oh, you little Venusaur getting up to so many tricks, able to put the Kyogre to sleep, meaning Oliver's max moves are certainly going to be restricted here. The Behemoth Blade goes into the Venusaur and gets the KO for good measure. Kind of very angry Zation there, not happy with what the Venusaur has done to its partner Pokemon that is going to be taking its first turn of guaranteed sleep. Little talk, although, left unattended, able to go for that Burning Jealousy. Going to be a two-hit on that opposing Zash, and of course, Kyogre really not going to be worried about it, particularly with this residual damage as well. Zash now in such a precarious position going forward. Yeah. It's, um, it, the, the Kyogre really needs to stay asleep for these remaining Dynamax turns uh, mm -hmm. for Victor because if it does, then there's no way that the weather can change. Um, it's going to be difficult for the Torkoal to really whittle it down, though. So it, between the Incineral and the Torkoal, is it going to be able to do enough damage to the Kyogre? And I think you've got to really hope that it does stay asleep for the remaining turns of its Dynamax. I mean, this is the thing. The Kyogre can be critical here. If it wakes up, then it's going to be able to do so much damage. If it stays asleep, it allows Victor the opportunity to deal with the Zashin. However, I'm not sure what Incineroar and Torkoal can do to the Kyogre. Not a lot. I mean, you can parting shot it, but it mm -hmm. then opens the door for the Zashin to get an attack off. It has been damaged pretty heavily, and it 
probably susceptible to maybe going down to Brain and Jealousy here, but um, just going for that Protect just to stall out this uh, fake out potentially coming into that slot. But you probably have to go for the parting shot, and it depends what options the um, Incineroar's got as well. Does it have a Dark type attack that could launch into that Kyogre? But as long as the sun's up, these fire type attacks are boosted, but Kyogre are going to be able to kind of take those all day long. It's just whether or not Oliver can wake up. If he can, he can get a Max Geyser off and then that really changes mm -hmm. the game for him. Well, the odds are increasing with each turn. That was the second turn of sleep. There is, of course, the chance that it will be asleep for the third turn. We'll wake up on the fourth, but by that point, Dynamax is over. You don't have the opportunity to go for a Max Geyser and change the weather. That said, in three more turns anyway, the harsh sunlight will disappear. But while it's up, it, I mean, if you're Oliver, you might just need to kind of protect your it, your Kyogre. There's nothing in the Dynamax form that it's threatened by, for example. And Cineral Torkoal really can't touch it. So even out of the Dynamax, if you're able to stall out those sun, you can go for oh, any water type move really into either of these Pokemon and just start whittling away at them because there's not a lot they can do in return, particularly even if it's asleep. With this double HP stat, it's incredibly, incredibly bulky. Incineral takes a huge amount of damage from the Zashin here as Kyogre does get the third turn of sleep. Yeah, and the Kyogre, like you mentioned, you know, it's going to be able to kind of brush off these attacks from these two fire types. The Zashin going down here, but the, the, the thing is that the Kyogre is in such a healthy position. This mm -hmm. water spout is still going to be very powerful, even in the sun. And these oh. of sun are ticking down as well. Oh, I mean, the body press coming out here from the Torkoal is nice to see that it has that utility. Incineral hanging on on one HP as well from that Flare Blitz. But the issue is, I still do not know what these Pokemon are going to be able to do. Yes, you've got the body press, but as you can see, it's not its not going to be nearly enough damage. Kyogre's going to wake up on this next turn, and Incineroar really just, anything is going to blow it over at the minute, right back into the Pokeball. And if Torkoal's opting, you know, if we take a look at its move pool, if it's going for those body presses, it's not going to be enough. Kyogre's going to be able to target it down and start picking up KOs against it. It's only going to be a matter of time. Yeah, you've got to wonder what other options that Torkoal has. Does it have Yawn? Because this would be a prime time to go for it if it does have Yawn. It's got the Citrus Berry, so it gives a little bit of room to kind of take an attack. Um, but from now on, these Water-type attacks are going to be single target, so they're going to be hitting a little bit harder as well. Kyogre went for the Water Spout. Torkoal is going for the Yawn, being like, do you know what, Kyogre, I liked it when you were sleeping. Can you do that again, please? So if Torkoal goes for the Protector, you know, Kyogre can't switch out. It's going to go back to sleep. And that's actually a really interesting situation here. If Kyogre wants to take the three turns of sleep again, yeah. it gives Torkoal the opportunity to keep going for those body presses, whittling away at it. So those Water Spouts will be dealing minimal damage, possibly putting it in a position where Torkoal is able to survive a Water Spout from that Kyogre and put it back to sleep again. And really, the, the naps that this Kyogre is taking could really determine the outcome of this match. Yeah, it has to stay asleep now. It really does because that sun is gone. Water Spout, Origin Pulse are going to be hitting for very big damage on this Torkoal. It hasn't got that sun protection anymore, reducing the power of those water type attacks. So it all comes down to how long this Kyle can stay asleep and well, are these body presses going to be enough? Turn one, it's sleeping, as it's going to do. Body press going into Kyogre does do a significant chunk of damage. Maybe, I don't know, maybe even two more of those, but it wakes, oh, it up. wakes up. It wakes up, goes for the water spout without the sun in the sky, and it's going to be and enough to KO enough. the Torkoal, meaning Oliver Eskelin will be your second finalist at the European International Championships. What a way to end that game.